Okay, so um, this is going to be slightly experimental because I don't know for sure that my computer can handle streaming this for longer than 20 minutes or so. Um, so please uh, pop up in the chat and tell me if it's like starts lagging or, or getting weird and stuttery or anything like that and I'll try and fix it. Um, otherwise, I think I'm ready to jump right in. There's one thing I want to say first, which is that this has a recap video that plays the first time you load it up. I don't know if you can watch it again. No, uh, yeah, you can, but it's long as hell. It, all we really need to know is that you play a guy called Ethan, his his wife went missing, he went to go rescue her when he got a mysterious videotape from her. Um, He shows up, she's like, you really shouldn't have come here, uh, because she's been mind-controlled by a creepy little girl who has mold powers because she's a bioweapon that, that his wife's company created, it turns out. She's infected a whole bayou village, uh, well not village, like... Is it a mansion? Like a mansion in the swamp. Does like terrible, terrible things. You fight, you save your wife and yourself, and then you fight the giant mold monster. And that's basically, that's Resident Evil 7. And at the end, series regular Chris Redfield shows up and is like, hi, I'm here to save you. Oh, I noticed you've done that already. And that's basically the recap. I'm going to go with standard difficulty because I haven't played it on hardcore, so I don't... I've heard that the hardcore mode is, is broken, so... It's not because I'm a weenie. Long ago, a young girl went with her mother to pick berries for her father, who was hard at work. But the forest greeted them with a dark, cold silence, the bushes empty. Yet determined to find the berries, the rascal broke free from mother's grasp and vanished into the trees. Mother's worried cries faded fast as the girl ran on, over vine and under branch, and into the forest deep. Feeling strange eyes upon her, the girl recalled Mother's scary bedtime tales, and her throat became bone dry. Then the Pat Lord appeared. He greeted her warmly and bit his own wing. Come, child, quench your thirst, he said. So she drank the thick, dark blood and smiled with joy. Passing through the graveyard, menacing storm clouds loomed, and the air turned bitingly cold. The girl was shivering in her thin clothes. Then a dark weaver appeared, and with a click of his fingers, crafted mist into a beautiful dress. Come, child, warm yourself, he coaxed. So she clothed herself and smiled with joy. Across waters deep and ominous she went, hoping a boat she found would carry her home. But hunger's grip tightened and her heart grew heavy. Then the fish king appeared and offered one of his many fins. Come, child, eat your fill. So the girl ate and smiled with joy once more. Continuing on, she soon entered the forest's dark heart. Then an iron steed appeared, bearing a beautiful, golden gear. The creature said nothing as the girl approached and snatched what she thought was another gift. The horse grew angry and summoned the other monsters. Terror filled the girl's heart as the wild wind rose around the beast. Suddenly, a witch appeared, dark yet regal. Gifts we gave, but more you took, she snarled. So more in turn is due. In a blink, the girl was trapped inside a mirror. There. She's asleep. What is with the creepy story? She's only six months old. The woman at the store said it was traditional. <laughs> a local tale. Besides... Rose doesn't seem to mind. Because she doesn't understand it, thank God. We moved here so that she wouldn't have to deal with any of that, remember? There's nothing wrong with my memory. You're just being paranoid. It's not... Never mind. I'm sorry. But I'm not paranoid. I'm just cautious. Then, go cautiously take your daughter to bed. I'll finish dinner. Kind 
of an uncomfortable relationship dynamic between these two. One thing that I do think is really me. neat is that this is... Your mother doesn't want to remember him. I can't blame her. It's a very strong stylistic departure from Resident Evil. Something? Nothing. I'll put her down. Uh, very few Resi games have departed from the, like, traditional Resi style of this kind of, like, techno-future cyber-realism, um, with, you know, bio-mutant monsters and otherwise the world is as it is. It's very unusual for them to have a stylistic opening like that. You know, I spent most of my life not being broody. Mom got you another new book? But in the past year or so, I've gotten weirdly broody. Too many games where I play a parent of some kind. You hungry? No? Maybe Don't later, then. Don't get too close to me when I'm cooking, babe. See, there's a really weird energy, and it makes sense that there might be such a weird energy between a couple where, you know... Uh, one of them went mad in a Louisiana bayou and you cut the other's hand off. Hand. So this stuff keeps piling up. She makes this by hand? Kind of endearing to imagine a, a young parent printing off labels from the printer in the workroom, you know, sticking them on tins of nutritious pap for their child. There was a moment when I was in my teens when something flipped and suddenly. There, there. It's like I said to your mom. That book's too scary for you. Suddenly, parents of my acquaintance would just abruptly start handing me babies. It was really uncomfortable because I am incredibly clumsy and I don't think you can necessarily trust me not to drop something important, and that's that's kind of the most important thing in the world not to drop. I just kind of toss them into your arms with this inexplicable level of trust. <coughs> Gotta do a deep clean before Rose starts walking around. Hmm. Mold problems, maybe? The curtain closes on the Dolby gas incident. The committee completed their investigation on the 18th into the Dolby toxic gas leak in Louisiana in 2017. They concluded the deaths were caused by a leak of natural gas that had built up in the mud rock under the area. Jack Baker, 57, and his family, who were exposed to the gas, perished. Ethan Winters and his wife are also believed to have been nearby, but their current whereabouts are unknown. The entire area has been closed off by officials, who believe it will be at least ten years before the area is inhabitable again. Everyone's forgotten about this already. I do find that kind of curious, because... Uh, well, I mean, I suppose, yeah. We know that that's just the excuse, because it was not in fact an explosion, but the, the horrible mold monster. So that's why it has to be quarantined, Your mom but... And I love this song so much. You know, gas explosions don't normally require a quarantine. I'm not sure they've... Been, I'm not sure they've mentioned it, but they have, they have left America and moved to Europe on the grounds that it's... better than, than being in the place where all of the horrible bio-experimentations keep happening, but, um... This is such an American kind of nice house. There you go, sweetheart. Don't you worry. I'll be right downstairs. Daddy won't let those weird fairy tale monsters get you. It is weird to be reading fairy tales to like a six month old. I'm pretty sure that they aren't like able to understand even the most basic kind of stories at that point. Read some emails. February 6, 2021, Mia and I had another fight. I accidentally mentioned what happened three years ago and she blew up at me. We finally settled down in our new life in Europe and can bring Rose up properly, but I still feel like part of me is trapped in that hellhole in Louisiana. I know Mia doesn't like to talk about it, but can we really forget everything and pretend it didn't happen? Shouldn't we face what happened there so we can live our lives with Rose without hanging it hanging over our heads? We owe her that much, at least. I know Mia knows this too. She wouldn't have exploded if she didn't care. 
Also, how is my how is my volume? Do I need to tweak my voice at all, or are we good? The difficulty with therapy is that um, you have to find a therapist who's willing to hear you say, oh, I can't talk about that. That's classified when you I talk you about stay like this forever. literally every single one of the things that has traumatized you. Gun survivalist, a heavy firearms manual. Really to get you. Where's his favorite toy? I mean, oh, a six month old is definitely old enough to have favorite toys at the very least. Oh, no animation for opening the cupboard. Most of the openable things in the game do have animations. I think I'm missing anything. We good? There's a weird consistency of people I know who want to try eating baby food. I don't understand why. Although, formula isn't baby food. Formula is, um, is the powder, the powdered milk stuff. Is she okay? Sleeping like, uh, well, like a baby. Hmm, <laughs> that smells good. What's that? Oh, hands off, mister. It's chorba de lagum. It's a local recipe. Really wow. showing off the fluid tag. Native, haven't you? Hmm? Except Local that. Wine too. Unfortunately, if you're keep God damn it. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have any. I forgot there was a reason I have a rule of not talking over cutscenes. Worrying. It's just finding you in Louisiana, the pregnancy, Chris moving us here, military training—it all happened so fast, you know. Well, at least we're all together. You, me, Rose. Now, everything's gonna Seriously? be. Seriously. Think we can just forget about what happened in Louisiana? It happened so long ago. I just I don't understand why you are so <sighs> Mia, get down. Mia! I mean it's not the first time he's seen his wife machine gunned. Mia. Chris? What the hell? Sorry, Ethan. No! What? Why? Go move! All clear. Rose? What the hell are you doing with my daughter? Package secure, sir. Take him away. I said get your hands off her! Ethan, no. Rose. Package secured, sir. And also we've got the baby. I mean, Nathan is also very much protagonist name. There's a really tight pool for the names that are allowed to be protagonists in games. It used to be just basically John and Jack. Okay, enjoy. I mean, she, the MILF doesn't show up for like hours of gameplay, I don't think. So you're not going to miss her this episode. No problem. We'll be there. That was the doc. She'll see us next week. Hey now, think positively, all right? We talked about this. I know. We hardly talk about anything else. I, I keep telling you, it's not Rose that I'm worried about. Well then what are you worried about? Look, she's gonna be fine, I just know it. What else matters? We matter, Ethan! You matter! You 
Just Mia, Mia, what are you talking about? Is there something you're not telling me? Come on, talk to me. Damn it. I have to take this. Generally a bad idea. I think most relationship coaches will tell you, you've got to put the work phone down sometimes. Jesus. Where's Chris Redfield? And Rose? Who is this? This is a secure channel. You are not off the Fuck. What the hell happened to you? Now, finally, we get to do some video games. Useless phone. Mission objectives. Eliminate target. Recover body. Secure Rosemary Winters and Ethan Winters. Move the two Winterses to Site C for further investigation. At least two transport officers must accompany them. No useful supplies in here. I might need to tweak the brightness up, depending on how well you guys can see what's going on. It's supposed to be very a very kind of bright and dark game. Um... I think there's interesting an interesting thing about the way that kind of like Kiarusko is used only in like the most like games that want to be intense. It's limited to survival horror, really. I am going into this one almost completely blind. I've played the first twenty minutes a couple times while I was um, attempting to make sure that my game, my computer, could stream it okay. But aside from that. Uh, I don't know anything except for the, like, five minutes of the demo. And, uh, and possibly a spoiler for the end of the game that I'm not sure is real, that I accidentally found when I was looking up the plot of the previous game. Um, not to climb on a soapbox or anything, but I think that people who update, um, wiki entries with, hey, this is what happens in the sequel, in such a way that it is ambiguously worded and you think it's talking about what happens in the previous game, that's maybe not a cool thing to do the day the game comes out. Like, just because you played played it through for eight hours the day it came out and can update the wiki doesn't mean everybody else can. Spooky. So I'm kind of inoculated to jump scares at this point. I'm also kind of inoculated to this game's jump scares of its first 20 minutes. I'm curious to see whether it actually starts to creep me out at all. I think that was supposed to drop down in front of my face, but conveniently I was looking at my feet. This is why you should always look at your feet wherever you're walking anywhere in real life. Uh, you would not believe the number of times I'm uh, heading to the shops and I get just local community bird drops. Apologies to my many viewers who are very fond of birds, because I'm sure this is a distressing experience for you. Ha, <laughs> see? <laughs> I knew you were going to say something about it. Oh, a spooky man. I do think it's a really fun step to take the series away from um, zombies made by... Uh, zombies and biomutants made by an evil virus made by an evil virus company, which is the plot of all but one of the other games. Well, gee, I wonder if there's a spooky guy in here. Because, based on the marketing materials, this one seems like it's going for a much more kind of gothic horror vibe with werewolves and vampires. Which is not something the Resident Evil series has done before, it's always been techno-futuristic zombies and weird monsters. There's a curious dissonance to the way that you kind of- you're only allowed to open one drawer. Ethan is a man who will walk into a mysterious house looking for supplies, I guess, and check one and only one drawer.
I think this section is sort of supposed to be teaching you to explore ruined buildings for supplies. Because its attempts to sort of build up the tension aren't like... Aren't exactly original. You know, there's blood trail into a spooky house and then there's a spooky basement. And this man just has the most terminal curiosity of anyone I've ever met. He has like... Fatal protagonist syndrome. That's that reminds me of uh, the art of is it Zladislaw Bazinski, famous nightmare painter. Well, gee, I wonder if the spooky man lives in here. He is way smaller than he was when I saw him outside, huh? I guess it's fine, there's nothing wrong. Oh no! I suppose it's natural for Ethan to think, yeah, there was a fucked up mold incident, but that happened like one time. Oh shit, yeah, you're right. I was gonna talk about this. Um I playing the first 20 minutes over and over, I came to a personal theory about the direction this series is taken. And that is that um, Resident Evil 7 was kind of a soft reboot for the series. Resident Evil 7 is not about the Umbrella Corporation doing weird bullshit, which, of course, Resi 4 is the only one that hasn't also done that. Also hasn't done that. Um, so there's always been this like techno-futurist monsters made by viruses thing going on, except for that one game. Excuse me. So, one thing that I find really pleasing is that this, that Resident Evil 7 is a step away from that, and it's also a very big mechanical change. Um, the first several Resident Evil games, the first five-ish, were, um, because I'm counting Resident Evil uh, 0 and Resident Evil Code Veronica, of course, were these very kind of, like, panned out, fixed camera, va fixed camera angle dealies, where you would have, um... It's survival horror, but very third person. Resident Evil 4 revamped the the aesthetic, the like visual style, and made it a third person game that was very similar to a first person game. It was a very tight, over the over the shoulder third person. And then the next several games were like that too. Where the hell am I? And then Resident Evil 7 completely. It was a it was a thorough soft reboot. It takes place in the same universe. The same events have all happened. Um, but it's happening somewhere else, and Umbrella Corporation isn't involved, and it's not the T-Virus, it's mutated mold and so on. And it's also first person, and it's this very tight survival-based adventure where you are... You're not mowing down zombies, you are you are fighting three or four people in the entire game. There's just... Like, there's a handful of areas where there are random monsters, but... For the majority of the game, you are being hunted. And you are defending yourself against the things that are hunting you. So, under that logic, I think that Resident Evil 7 was the new Resident Evil 4, kind of a complete mechanical reboot of the series. And if that's the case, then... Um, or, no, if, if it's a reboot for the series, it's the, the new Resident Evil 1. Um, so this is interesting, I'm just going to have an aside here to talk about this, because I'm definitely going to be returning to this issue over, over the entire course of this series. I'm going to keep coming back to this, keep talking about this, even when all of you are sick of me talking about this. I'm going to keep going back to... It's a dead horse, I'm beating the dead horse, do you get it? That's the joke. There's a graphical glitch here that seems to always be happening on my system, and I don't know why. No matter how I tweak the graphics settings, there's always black eggs here for some reason. Yeah, poor horse. Anyway, so um, if Resident Evil 7 is the new start of the Resident Evil series, if Resident Evil 7 is the new Resident Evil 1, then this is the new Resident Evil 4. It doesn't. It's not American, it's European. It's um, much more fighty and aggressive because there's tons of monsters for you to mow down. Uh, spoilers for like five minutes from now. Maybe, maybe they're out? Yeah, maybe they went to find a less fucked up house to live in. Walking in like, damn, bitch, you live like this? Oh, spooky. It's really easy to miss that set piece, but that was the horse getting dragged away. Um, 
So yeah, we should probably head down the lane, which means obviously we won't because we've played video games before. But yeah, so this this kind of like thematic mirroring between the two is interesting to me. If you you had the first game in the series, Resident Evil 1 or Resident Evil 7, it takes place in a singular big mansion that you explore. Um, it starts out seeming quite supernatural, but then reveals that it's it's all kind of like science horror. Now, now, how is anyone supposed to poop in there? That's that's just inconvenient. It is an inconvenience. Um, but yeah, so then you have this, which is the Resident Evil Four or the Resident Evil Set uh, Eight. So where you you take it to Europe and you make it much more fighty, much more much more combaty. And I'm I find that just a really pleasing direction to go. In addition to the, the gothic horror rather than the sort of techno-futurist horror. And on top of all of that, the first 20 minutes of this game have been giving me intense Dark Souls vibes. I don't say that about a lot of games because I'm a, you know, I'm a major Dark Souls obsessive as anyone who's been following my work for a while will know. And I am actually hoping to stream Dark Souls 2 and 3 at some point to add them onto my classic Dark Souls playthrough. Oh yeah, of course you have to plug giant excessive medallions into doors to open them. That It wouldn't be Resident Evil if you didn't have to do that. In fact, that's one of the things that I found really amusing about Resident Evil 7 is that... Um, oh, hello. Oh, that's definitely the doll that um, Rose had back home. That should not be here. But yeah, um, what I love is that there's a Louisiana mansion that clearly is only about 20 to 30 years old. It's, it's not an, a grand old pile. It's definitely a new-ish building. Um, and it is inhabited by, like, uh, backwards swamp people. Uh, and despite that, they still have, you know, you have to find the three heads of the, of the Cerberus bar relief in order to unlock the front door. You know, of course they still have a puzzle where you have to put things into a statue in order to get something to open. It's like, they kind of hang a lampshade on it because at one point in the game you can find a letter for, that's from the, like, um, like the electrical company installing some of these bizarre puzzle locks, but it is it is the most Resident Evil thing in the world. You know, this is such a long running series. It really is the GOAT. What happened? Oh, I think we have a map available at this point. Yeah. I think this is where, I think this is where uh, Old Town Road was about. But uh, we can explore this environment a fair bit, but there's only these two streets I've gone down. What does this say? Locked due to missing homeowner. I mean, there seem to be a lot of missing homeowners around. Naturally, this is the only one with the lights on, so it's the only one with someone in it, because game iconography is just not subtle and also very clear. Anything with yellow paint on is to indicate that it's interactable. There are things like street signs and, you know, some of those locked gates had uh, inter the sort of yellow interactability paint on them. I find these things bring me out of the game a little bit. They, they sort of break my suspension of disbelief slightly. Run out of the house? There's that fluid tech again, as you can sort of see the transparency of it, which is, that's the most impressive piece of technology I've seen in this game so far, is this... Uh, Really pretty fluid transparency effect they have going on. Now, who would live in a place like this? I bet it's I bet it's not some kind of weird old man pointing a gun at me. Yowza! Friendly, friendly. Who are you? Who sent you? Nobody. There was an accident down the road. And... It's faster than you think. He's about to give me a gun. This guy has the Innsmouth look. Oh no! <coughs> They're coming. Who is? What the hell was that? You have a gun? What? Please tell me you have a gun. You're an American. No, you must I? have a gun. Take it. 
Wow, oh, the people here are really friendly. It's okay, he's part of the house now. I don't want to be part of the house. Dead body? Wait, there's more. Welcome to the murder hole, it's where we keep the murders. I think people have just been throwing their trash down here, which, now that I think about it, has clearly continued. Look at this guy struck down in the prime of his life. I'm not sure it's necessary to lift this guy's head out of the way to climb past him. Yeah, like I said, this this game definitely Jesus seems to be Christ. the uh, the Resident Evil Four of this new rebooted series. Resi 1. What the hell is wrong with this place? Takes place in a creepy mansion with a creepy <laughs> lab nearby. Resi 4. Taking place in Europe with a creepy castle. Although, everyone here seems to speak with a, an American. Oh, hey. Uh... See, I forgot this happens, and yet it still didn't startle me. You could hand it to him. This guy has amazing pain tolerance. Don't worry, though. He'll be alright. I also like the aesthetic change away from, like, the classic Resident Evil staggering zombies to this kind of, like, sort of, like, fast, slow... Um, very movement changey uh, style. These really remind me of like eight seventies and sixties horror movies. Um, their their movements and their visuals have kind of like a. <coughs> My throat keeps um, keeps closing up. That uh, that sucks. But they definitely have this this vibe that is much more kind of like an American werewolf in. Uh, in London, or this, or even like, actually, the person they really remind me of is the, is it Lou Berrega, uh, the guy who played, um, the Incredible Hulk in the nineteen seventies Incredible Hulk TV show. That is who these remind me of most of all. So I'm going to be exploring fairly heavily and with a great deal of detail most of the places of this game, but I have played through these twenty minutes a few times. So I do know where everything is, and there's not a ton of environmental detail beyond just like, oh look, there's... Like, there sure is a lot of, like... I was gonna say cottage core, but this is like... just cottage. Um, there's a lot of, you know, tiny Eastern European village doodaddery lying around. And uh, but there's very little that we can interact with. See, it's not a fucked up cottage though, it's just an ordinary little shack that people live in in places in the world, although how many places there are left like this in Europe, I'm not entirely sure. Oh gee, it sure looks like I might be able to get past this later. In fact, I think there's a signpost or something. Yeah, you see that? That's a signpost, you can tell because it's got the yellow paint that makes it, you know, important things be high lit in the environment. This might be a good place to take a nap later. Although the kind of the, the classical image of the rustic peasant asleep in the haystack is one I've never quite understood because for anyone who's ever actually touched hay, you know, it's it kind of sucks. Oh, spooky. Well, gee, I bet there's another fucked up guy in there. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, Rizzi, Rizzi 4 took place in, in, in not, not Spain, I guess. The Iberian Peninsula isn't. Um, 
And and this is in, I guess, uh, Ruritania, let's say. It's in it's in the eastern part of Western Eastern Europe. These will come in handy. You know, I've got to say, um, oh, actually, this is another thing that reminds me of uh, the difference between Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 4 is, you know, Ruritania. Oh. Is uh, the ability to barricade yourself into places and move furniture around for these like set piece combats? Um, in fact, this this kind of pretty strongly follows the the opening to Resident Evil Four. It's it's very much a similar but different retread, for lack of a better term. Do I have enough crafting materials? That's what I want to know. I I can make healing juice, maybe. Yes, there we go. I'm sure that will come in handy in a moment. So, when I was playing this the other day, um, for testing purposes, this whole set piece bugged super bad. It was incredibly tense and I was genuinely freaked out and having a good time. <laughs> and then it, it bugged so badly. Um, this guy who was supposed to spawn in here and be like, oh no, I can't run past him to like fight him efficiently. Um, he got stuck on the staircase, he clipped into the wall, and he just stayed there running on the spot forever. Um, which meant the entire game softlocked permanently. And I had to start over from save point, but it also meant that I could run around testing the limits of this simulation, like, as much as I like. And what I discovered is that... If you don't know this, it's a really tense sequence. If you do know this, you know there's literally nothing to worry about, because none of these guys can break in. They are stuck outside. They just keep hammering on the walls forever while you play tag with this guy on the on the ground floor. Time to get laid. And then when he dies, like the scripted sequence ends and it moves on to the next thing and they all fuck off. Is it over? Oh, there's still an inventory Tetris, but I Oh, it is a briefcase, you're right. Unfortunately, it doesn't have quite the same physical energy as the attaché case from Resi 4. Hello. If there are any survivors out there, come to my... to Louisa's house near the fields. Survivors? One moment, please. Okay. I was just out of curiosity checking my uh, stream manager and it looks like I have four bots watching me, so that's fun. So, this leads into a longer sequence, which again kind of reflects the Resident Evil 4 sequence. Are we- guys, are we cool? Are we- are we good? Cool. Okay. I mean, I feel like there's kind of a... There could easily be a kind of a... This is our place. Why are you here? Please leave vibe to this. But the fact that you do meet someone who lives here and he's just like, oh, fuck, there's monsters, means that you don't get that same kind of energy for all the possessive way they walk up and down the ceiling shingles. As I understand it, as far as I can tell, they attack when you uh, either attack them or when you come in here and get the shotgun. Or if you spend ages walking around. Beep boop beep boop. Maybe, maybe bots are so attracted to my channel because of my name. I think I solved the mystery. Right then. There's kind of... I wonder if partly uh, some of the like aesthetics of this game were inspired by Bloodborne as well, because there is a dude in this who is pretty much just 100% out of Bloodborne, who we will meet shortly. I can fight and kill these guys, and they will drop money, which is nice of them. 
There's no end to them. But uh, I'm not just about to lay down and die like they are. Get it? Because the money they drop is called lay. Exploding barrels, another uh, video game staple that you did not find in the previous game. So if I get them to both be within range of this, I can get myself. Uh, see, one of the interesting things, now that I think about it, yeah, that's one of the things I think is, is curious, actually. He does seem to be better at guns than you would be if you've had half your hand cut off. That's why I mentioned his inexplicable pain tolerance. But he's been through this before. He had that whole entire hand cut the fuck off in the previous game, and then they just reattach it with staples, which apparently works. You in that toilet the whole time? It's nice of them to give you enough time to actually put these barricades up as well. Very, um... Very, very, very kind and respectful of them. They're more magnanimous than werewolves usually are. But that's the, just the kind of hospitality you can expect here. You know, I think I might take my next holiday to um, Bohemia Ain't. Now, somewhere around here is uh, is the biggest guy. There he is. The largest man. I don't know what it is about him, but he has uncle vibes. He feels like someone's uncle to me. So, my prediction for how this sequence works is that it lets you survive as long as you can, and then it kills you with a cutscene whenever you would die from being killed anyway. Um, I don't know for sure if you can... Like kill the big man. I don't- there's probably not enough resources. But you can- you can kill quite a few of the, uh, the werewolf men. And indeed, if you do, um, some of them seem to drop better items. I got something called a crystal skull from- from killing a bunch of them. And I'm genuinely not sure if that's because I survived for a certain amount of time or because I killed a certain percentage of these guys. Ethan's got these, like, iron iron forearms. He's very good at blocking. Oh, I'm out of bullets. Shit. Okay. Probably shouldn't be wasting all my resources, but... I love to be cornered. Oh, fuck. At a certain point, even if you're not currently being hit by attacks and stuff, um, this happens. And we get the cutscene that ends this sequence. Honestly, you're joking, but this happened to me the last time I went on holiday to Glasgow. I can say that, I live in Scotland now. But this guy is just straight up out of Bloodborne. He's the most father Gasboyne looking guy I've ever seen. Or is it Hunter? God, I can't remember. I mean, he does have the resilience of a man who was previously infected with a magic resilience enhancing mold. Alright, it looks like I'm starting to get slowdowns, which I think happens about every like 40 minutes of gameplay because of bad engine reasons. Um, it doesn't happen to everybody. It might be because my... Uh, my computer isn't quite strong enough to run this. 
Um, or it might just be a bug that people get, because there's also a mismatched audio bug that is apparently fairly common and is unrelated to what people's systems are. It's just, if you play this game, there's a chance you might be one of the people who gets the unlucky bug, where the audio mismatches and, um... Where did the rest of his third finger go? Grandma? Santa Claus? I might need to think of a different time of day to stream because, um, I gotta tell you, it is so uncomfortable sitting here in the, in the heat from the blasting off of this, this, this screen I have blocking the window. It's awful. Yeah, so what I'm actually gonna do is, whenever I reckon it's auto-saved or if there is a save point, I'm going to close and reopen the game. Um, that might not be viable for streaming this long term, who knows, but it should work now. Pretty sure that that um, auto saves at the end of that whole sequence. All right, we should be back in and it should be fine. So if I go continue, I really hope it continues from the end of that previous cutscene. That's the sort of places it's been auto saving previously, but uh, you might need to run and kill everybody again. I'm a bit disappointed that I didn't get the crystal skull though, which I definitely got last time I was going through this. Yeah, that looks back to normal. It's it's definitely my VRAM getting full and needing to be reset or whatever. Completely out of bullets. That's inconvenient. Did I even miss anything in this area? Oh, oh, I definitely missed some lay. Can I grab that or not? One of the, like, main things about these, this particular kind of survival game is that it is very much, um, reliant on its resource economy for, um, for both difficulty and for, like, satisfaction of play. It feels good to play efficiently and to, and it is necessary to marshal your resources. Which means that there is a kind of a calculus you have to learn to do of, you know, how many bullets is one werewolf worth? How many bullets, Peiko, and not one left for me? Um, or is it Felipe? God damn, I can never remember these things. But, uh, yeah, so what I don't know at the moment is how many lay one bullet is worth. I know that I can make some bullets from... Uh, crafting reagents. It's two gunpowder and two scrap metal to make bullets. Which... and you get 15 for that. So therefore, logically, one rusted scrap is worth what, a quarter of 15 bullets, which is like three and a half-ish? Uh, four? Four? Four bullets, maybe? Three and a half? Something like that. Which means that... Um, if you If you spend more bullets than the amount than that killing a zombie, then you have net lost resources. So you should really be trying to break even, which is one of the reasons you need to get headshots, aside from the fact that it looks absolutely rad as hell. Everyone secretly wants to make someone's head explode with bullets, like, this is just one of the, the human needs. Uh, which is why it's so much better for the world that video games exist, because this is one of the great flaws with human history, is that there's this fundamental human need for to, like, point, point something at someone and watch them go pop. And uh, previously we were reliant on, on wizardry and crude ballistics, but now um, now we have these delightful simulators that let, let us get our bloodlust urges out of the way without impacting society. Or is that just me? Although, that reminds me of another point that has occurred to me while I've been doing this, which is that... Um, hmm. I could have... Oh, hey, it's, hey, it's the horse! It's the horse. The horse is back, everybody. I found the horse. Story over. Goal achieved. I got what I wanted. I know where the horse is. Like, I could have sworn I saw some stuff on, like, a middle floor of this house, but there's no way to get up, like, to get to a secondary floor. I don't know where I'm getting that mental idea from, but it's a weirdly compelling one. Well, maybe I can just reach up if I can decide. Oh, so blocking is important, which means that you can do this, which means that if you want to, you can wave at people. Hey! Which is another weird similarity with Dark Souls. Where you could use blocking to wave at people. Now, am I, am I insane or is there an item up here? Am I insane and also there's an item up here? Am I insane? I think I'm just, I might I might just be losing my mind. It's it's fine. It's been happening slowly over several years. Um but yeah, so the previous game in this 
uh, Resident Evil 7, it had this big mansion where you would be slowly pursued by... Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll talk about that after I talk to the old lady who I completely forgot was here, but... Again, snowy, big castle in the distance, big werewolf guy, like, this has a lot of Soulsborne energy, and as is traditional in a Souls game, there is a creepy old lady who laughs at you. In life and in death, we give glory. Like, this is just the dialogue uh, from an hello? intro to a Souls game. You shouldn't be out here. It's not safe. What the hell? Yes, hey, indeed. Can you hear me? you the child's father child hey wait do you mean rose is she here <laughs> rose rose yes she is in great danger since mother miranda brought her to the village we have fallen into darkness what are you talking about the monsters <laughs> the castle bell heralds danger they're coming! <laughs> no, wait, where's Rose? Who's Mother Miranda? The bell tolls for us all. They're coming again! <laughs> yeah, I know, right? She's like... Rose is here? You must travel east to the land of the ancient lords. Romania. So... We are released into a slightly more open bit, very much like the, the previous open bit where we can run around and explore things, except that now we get access to a, a fucked up little chapel. Environmental storytelling. Weird icons with probably blasphemous entities on them. Such as Stoned Maria. On Fire Guy. Some fucked up twigs. Nosy McNoseman. That's honestly too muddy for me to make out. Not On Fire Guy's uh, the brother of On Fire Guy. They're, they're very related. There's a lot of deep lore to these characters is what I'm getting at. O oh, great lichens, fabled monster wolves of old. May they come to eat our flesh. May they come to tear us apart. Like... It's uncomfortably sexual. Like, I don't know, there's a lot of people on the internet who talk about wanting to get knotted by a werewolf, but they don't usually go to the point of getting blasted apart by cum. So I guess this is the triple triple X rated uh, stream, you know, like you go to go to my YouTube channel if you wanna see wanna see my family friendly stuff, like murder sprees. Or um I guess come to the streams for SCA after dark. <laughs> I'm so f I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Actually, no. Fuck it. I'm owning this. This is what I'm like. You need to live with that. We're about to see a little bit more proof as to my uh, ongoing theory about the. Actually, shit. I have no idea if I have any underage followers or fans. I thought everyone who's a fan of me is like or watches my stuff is like, at least twenty three. Anyway, um. So in. Resident Evil 4, it was a fun thing, if you, it's not obvious, but if you kill the crows in that game, which are mostly just environmental decoration, they drop loot. Don't know if this was worth four bullets, but I think one of them dropped 500 the other day, so I guess it must be randomised. Unless that third one that got away was the one with 500. So if you can kill them with one bullet, it's worth doing. If you can, if you, if it takes a few for you to knock them down, then um, you need to get good at shooting birds. Otherwise, it's not, it's not worth it. But it does, it is another parallel with Resi Four as different to Resi One. You know, representing the two major stages of Resi's growth as a series. I think my uncle had one of these. We offer these goats of warding to protect the village and its people. Any who break them should feel Mother Miranda's wrath. Is that, is that telling me I can break these? Are these collectibles? I feel like I shouldn't piss- Ooh. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, that's a big door with a medallion hole, but like, the traditional Resident Evil medallion hole door is completely fitting for a weird European fantasy castle. It is less fitting for, for example, a police station in LA. Uh, you, you sure I should break it? Seems kind of mean. Is anyone watching? No, there's no one here. 
going to happen. Well, that seems explicitly magical. I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Oh, ah, I see something shiny. So, uh, again, like Resident Evil 4, there's a lot of treasure items that are scattered around the environment that you can find and obtain and use for... Well, for treasure. You know, any of the conceivable uses you might have for treasure, you can, uh, you can use treasure for, who knew? I guess you could argue I've broken two goats, considering I shot one in the eye and a gem fell out. I think this is called, the statue's called like the Maiden of War or something, but that's definitely a goat. Or it could be a ram, actually. Speaking of ram, I should use the save point. Which I think was in here. Did I miss it or is it in the other room? Oh no, it was in the chapel, that's right. So, um, after this area, I'm out of information, pre-existing information. Actually, no, there's there's one more set piece, and after that set piece, I'm completely adrift, and I, I don't know what else there is uh, that will happen to me and or Ethan in this weird, fucked up little village. For all that this is uh, Eastern European themed, it weirdly reminds me of my, my grandmother's village in... Um, in Central Ireland. I went back a couple of years ago to, to visit relatives. It was really nice. Um, but the same kind of like weird heaps of old stone and, and fucked up little buildings. It's undergoing a lot of development at the moment, which is probably good for the local people to some extent, but still feels weird. It's kind of kind of fucked up to see all the uh, big like. Um, you know, like boards around building sites and so on in a place that was very, very rural last time I was there. Well, gee, I wonder what I do with that. So yeah, uh, more Dark Souls stuff. What do we got? We've got four lords. What are the chances? We've got... Uh, the most werewolf-looking man in existence. We've got a creepy puppeteer. I'm, I'm going to refrain from making any of the extremely obvious comments and just move on. And we've got a fucked up bog witch, which... It's like... The girl I'm looking at in the bar? Me. <laughs> oh, of course, Jules, that's the only reason you've been watching, right? You want to see the hot lady? Uh, it'll be a while before she turns up in person. I presume this is the mysterious Mother Maria who is wearing a fucked up mask. Is this an antechamber? No. That's a different game. I'm going to save over this, which was my previous attempt when I was practicing things. Uh, it would probably be sensible for me to reload it now, but I'm not going to because I like to live dangerously. So this is the next set piece. Uh, it wouldn't be a creepy horror game if it didn't have a big cornfield for you to sneak through while being pursued by a bear. Well, by several men who look like bears. Although, of course, um, the like sexual gender politics of um, Eastern European homosexuals is not open to me. Oh, I can block this off. That might come in handy, but I would be trapped in here since there's no other way out. You can smash these open as well, but um, if you don't have a, a knife out, that's just a waste of a bullet. Uh, it causes smoke clouds, or, well, flower clouds, which stun werewolves. I uh, presumably enemies in general, but there is... lets you sneak past them, or stun them for a moment so you can get some headshots in. The most important thing to know about animals is that they definitely don't have super good senses of smell. You know, if a if a if a wolf can't see you, and you can't, if you can't see it, it can't see you. That's definitely the most important thing to know when you're being hunted by large predatory mammals. Just just absolute dog shit senses of smell. There's there's definitely no way that they can find you if they can't see you. Actually, this brings me back to my previous thought that I trailed off and forgot to talk about, which is that. 
This game is very much um, inspired by. Ooh, oh god, they saw me. Close the door, please. It's a human person. Hey, what are you doing here? Stay back. Please, don't hurt us. Whoa, it's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just glad to see normal people at last. Have you seen any other survivors? No. They're all in Louise's house. And she's not answering and the gate is locked. Quiet girl. He's an outsider. Oh. Shit, we're sitting ducks in here. Can your old man walk? No. One of the monsters cut him. He's lost a lot of blood. We have to get into Louise's Shh, house. Quiet. Must be a way inside. Stay here. Be quiet. Don't move until I get those gates open. <coughs> Everyone knows well it was Hate Louise's house. No one's really sure why, but it turns out they just have a really strong sense of smell and she likes garlic. Well, the question is, did he get bit or did he get cut? Because she said he got cut. If you want to, you can take a fight to the werewolves in, in, in there and waste all your ammo killing them, but uh, let's do what the game clearly wants us to do and not do that. Oh, hey, this one's actually not full of trash. Might need to come back here later. Man, I would respect it so much if one of these survival horror games with like built into the game diegetic save points like typewriters and audio diary machines just had their save points be toilets. I would respect that so much. Well, that's the other crest I need. Good to know. Let me in. There's two other people out here. I don't care about them. Please just let me in. Ethan Winter's no good, very fucked up day. I guess we know why everyone in this area builds their houses with giant fucking on, walls around them, though. He does look like the kind of person who turns into a werewolf, though. He's got that kind of haircut. He's not used to relying on other people. I'm sorry. We'll be safe in here, won't we? You're asking me. Out there, that's for sure. Hey, do you know anything about what's going on around here? It doesn't make any sense. Mother Miranda has always protected us. Nobody's answer. Father? Oh, hey, that wasn't supposed to happen. We have to get inside. Oh, that's amusing. It went out of the cutscene and, and turned into controllable at exactly the moment I alt tabbed to check something. Just hold on a bit longer, Papa. How dare you undercut me like that? Game you are my servant. You're supposed to make me do cool stuff, not make me look like a dumbass. I'm gonna help you, but you have to say so thank you. Blood. Hello? Anybody home? Well, after getting into Louisa's house, I have no idea what happens, Louisa, so you might be right. Open up, it's me, Elena! Stop shouting. You'll draw the monsters. Julian, calm down. Who's this? A friend. Stay back. <laughs> oh, the bugs happened. For God's sake, Julian, let us in. No, no, they'll smell the blood. You'll endanger us all. My father will die out here. But that's not my problem. What's going on? These people want to let a dying man into our home. Come now, these people are our friends. Go on, go inside. Come now, this way. I've looked this up and apparently there's no reason why it happens. It's uh, just that it randomly no. some people get I'm Ethan. desynchronized you audio in some cutscenes. I said go! Conceivably, conceivably, I might be able to fix this in post. I might actually be able to resynchronize this, depending on whether it's running slower or whether it's just mismatched. Wait here. I'll check on the others. That would be cool. I'll I'll note down the time so that I can see if I can do that in editing. 
Because, you know, I'm just that dedicated to producing a good product. It's a huge pain in the ass, but whatever. Now, when I tested this the other day, it was consistent that that cutscene would be bugged. However, um, the cutscene afterwards was bugged initially, but wasn't if I reloaded the game in between times. So I'm going to do that really quickly after I check this. Louisa, they broke in again and got more of the livestock. I don't think we'll make it through the winter at this rate. Ernest is missing too. We can't find him anywhere. Has Mother Miranda abandoned us? Has Mother Miranda abandoned us? Has Mother abandoned us? Miranda us? I'm, I'm drifting. When do these people live? Because I have not seen a single piece of technology later than like the 1930s so far. Right, time for a quick reload. Come inside, the others are waiting. Oh god, oh no. <laughs> I nearly forgot to switch it back, whoops. Outsiders, you're gonna get us all killed. Right, Anton. He helped Leonardo and Elena. We were doing fine by ourselves. Please, Ethan, take a seat. This looks not desynchronized. Is all that's left? From your entire village? All that's left? All that's left? There is no one left! A worthless invalid? A stupid, wailing bitch! And you! You drag a bloody man and an outsider in here like it's nothing? And expect to be all safe? There is no safe! Every sorry bastard out there has been ripped in half! But tomorrow? Tomorrow we're all just like her damn husband. <laughs> Put a sock in it, Roxana! That's enough! This house has protected my family for generations. And drunk or not, you are all welcome and safe in here. Whatever. Can someone please tell me what the hell is going on here? We don't know. One day we were a quiet, devout village, and the next, the monsters came and attacked us. And they, they kept coming. Wait, Louisa, and... where is your husband? Did they? No. N no, he, he is out there. Somewhere. He, he, he went to get help. Yes, yes, that's, that's it. He, he went to fetch help. Let us pray for him, for all of us. Good idea. Come. Great ones, hear our voice, together as one in reverence. We call on thee, within the endless dark, to deliver us into fate's hands. As the midnight moon rises on black wings, so we make our sacrifice and await the light at the end. In life and in death, we give you glory. Mother Miranda. This is what Ethan, yeah. Ethan Orthodox is like. Tea should be ready. Haven't you Come ever been to the... Elena, please. Yeah, I'm like, afraid. this is normal. I've this heard is... it before. There was an old woman near the graveyard. This is normal, church. Give me the hag. <laughs> Some bitch is crazy as a bag of rats. There is wisdom in her devotion, though. And I hope it protected her as it shall protect us. <laughs> What are you doing? Leonardo, what's wrong? Are you okay? Did the binky? Father! Elena, no, stay back! No, let me go! There is no way anyone could have predicted this eventuality. Don't, like, pull out your gun and shoot him with your gun or anything. Like, it's not like that's something you very definitely could have done to save that woman's life. Oh, we'll do it now, huh? Let him go! Elena? 
I'm sure Elena will be fine. No. She's been given way too much to do. wasn't your father anymore. You did the right thing. That was your uncle. How much have you been drinking? Elena, Elena, no. There's nothing you can do. Oh, she really wants to loot him. This is collapsing. Oh, hey, a cool truck. You couldn't save him. He was already gone. Leave me alone. No, we're getting out of here together. I gotta get out of here. I feel like Ethan is cursed, but his curse has like a 180% like death rate. He just he has a very bad day, but his bad days spill out and become very bad days for everyone else who's around him. Can I start the car? Can we just leave? Can we go? Oh yeah, we can. Okay. I should loot things first then. To anyone who's ever played um, popular post-apocalyptic roguelike and incredibly detailed crafting simulator, uh, god damn it, what the fuck was it called? Cataclysm DDA. You'll be very familiar with starting in a burning building and frantically scavenging it for supplies before you flee. Take the screwdriver out of the keyring if you need it. What? Oh, okay, I probably need that to start the car then, don't I? Also, hi, hello. Cute emoji. Or, I guess that's technically an emoticon. We mustn't forget that words mean things. Uh, well, I don't see anything else in here. Aha! Explore items in detail to find more clues. I don't feel like that was difficult to find. Even, <laughs> even the screwdriver has the little yellow paint marker on it to show you that it's an interactable item. If we could just get through this wall... Oh gee, I wonder if we had a large smashable implement that would uh, break through things the effectively. Fast. <coughs> I wonder what the screwdriver was for. Oh, maybe I can pick locks with it. Because there's definitely like some pick pickable locks. What are you thinking? Step back. We can bust out with this. Ethan, Ethan Winters does not have gay energy to me. He has the most straight man like energy I've ever seen, but not in like a, not in like an actually sexual kind of way, just in like a generic kind of way. I wonder if the whole game is this scripted. It could actually be pretty good if it is. Let me back up again. The fire. There isn't any time. Almost like a an interactable movie kind of situation. More to go, but up. Everyone knows the fire never rises, and also smoke likes to stay quite low to the ground. That's why you should always go upwards when you're in a house fire. Um, staying low to the ground and keeping your head like as low as possible is definitely the worst Don't possible worry. thing you can do when you're trying to escape a house fire. Thank you, Ethan. All of this is 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 bullshit, by the way. Kind. I'm being sarcastic. I, hope your is safe. I do too. Once we get out of here, maybe you'll get to meet them. <coughs> I hope your family is safe too. Oh wait, you just shot your dad. Come on, it'll hold. <laughs> There. That's our way out. Thank God. Hey, Elena, do you still have your rifle? The village is still full of monsters. We can't fight them. There's too many. Hey. Hey, don't talk like that. We'll find a safe house to put you in until I can find my daughter. My hunch is she's in that old castle. No. That place is full of nothing but blood and death. And I don't want to be alone while you're... Father? Elena, no. That's not him. Not anymore. He said my name. Father! Wait, it's not safe. I don't know about Ethan, but her dad is definitely flaming. Come on. 
Give me your hand. Ethan, go. Save your daughter. Elena, don't give up. Reach for me. God damn, I'm so emotionally invested in the existence of this person I've only seen for two minutes in this narrative. Why is everyone dying on me? It sounds like you might have some issues to work through. This is just too much. They do seem to be sort of gesturing at the existence of the traditional Resident Evil companion just, character. I don't get it. Constantly faking out who may or may not be the it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, this place is going mad. Why the fuck is this happening again? That must have oh, fucking shit. hurt. He does not he does not seem to be particularly bothered by his hand wounds. Also, all of these people had American accents, but the doctor we saw a little while back in a flashback definitely had a European accent, so I'm not sure what's up with that either. You got to hand it to him, like In fact, when uh, when everybody was yelling about how there's no one left, <laughs> there won't be anyone left no matter what we do, all of that stuff. All I could think about was his fucked up hand. Ethan just looking down like, yeah, I guess I'm not left anymore either. Oh. That sounds promising. Also, I have another question, which was, during the werewolf attack, who the fuck started shooting flaming arrows? Look, Americans are just like that. They don't, you know, the the knife is for knife things. The screwdriver is for screwdriver things. You can't go around um, using a knife as a screwdriver. Very, you know, prescriptive like that. Apologies to any Americans watching. Yeah, no, I definitely could have opened this with that. Oh, uh, one thing that I did uh, did think recently that I, I appreciate about this game, or what little of it I've seen so far, that I have vague hopes about. Can I climb up here? No. What's the point of this space? Oh, ah, that's why it's here. Collectibles! Love collectibles. I mean, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, so the Resident Evil games have this very kind of like mind prescriptive mindset, and so do so do the fans. Like, not to climb back on my regular soapbox because there is one thing that I will always be yelling about in every single let's play and every single stream I do, which is the tendency of people to think, ah, this thing exists in the narrative, therefore everything must be related to this thing in the narrative, and also everything in the narrative must be literal and and sensical because dream dream narratives and like allegorical logic and metaphors don't exist and or you know because oh you this takes place in star wars therefore this thing must be a jedi because it uses light side force powers as if like you know those are just traditions and cultures that exist within the context of that universe and there's no reason why there can't be other things that can do stuff that interacts with that in other ways and so on anyway the specific um that looks super interactable why is there one yellow board Whatever. Um, the specific way that way that interacts with Resident Evil for me is a lot of people watching this were like, ah, the vampire lady is very tall, therefore she must be some kind of T-virus tyrant because the T-virus makes big humans who are extra strong. And like, y yeah, like the T-virus exists and does that in the Resident Evil setting, but the fact that those physical mechanisms, you know, mutations that can make you super strong or whatever, exist means that the physical mechanisms by which those effects can be achieved must exist generally within the world. There's no reason to assume that it's only arisen once and only in the labs of Umbrella Corporation, especially when you consider that 
there are things like the Plagas in Resident Evil 4. So it's clear that at multiple times, in multiple places, in this world, this is just a thing that can happen. There are just diseases that can make you a super mutant in this in this world. That just is a thing that can naturally happen in different ways in different places. So if that logic is true, if that holds, then also there's no reason for people to assume that, oh, because there's a giant vampire lady in this, she must be some kind of bioweapon, just like every single other monster in every Resident Evil game, except Resident Evil 4, was a bioweapon created by an evil corporation. Like, if those mechanisms exist in the world, who's to say that some fucking alchemist 600 years ago didn't stumble on the principles and go, oh, I'm an alchemist, I like eternal life, I'm going to try and use this to make eternal life because that's what alchemists do. And then, you know, with his, like, fucked up weird lab under the castle made, you know, vampires and werewolves and maybe that's why the myths of vampires and werewolves exist in this world because some guy made them 600 years ago using the same biomechanical principles that are being used in 2001 to make zombies anyway uh climbing back down off of my off of my soapbox i think it's a really cool idea that they're reaching to other forms of horror since they've had like yes. 15 games yes. of the other sort death has visited them all <laughs> There's the Dark Souls laugh. You good? You got it all out your system? What's this symbol she keeps scratching? I wonder if it's some kind of defensive sigil of some kind. Oh, they're back at the church. I should probably save. I think that every time I save, I'll, I'll reload the game, assuming it's been another 20 to 40 minutes since I last did, just to make sure it doesn't get the slowdowns. I'm not going to restart the game until I start getting the slowdowns anyway, just in case, because it might just be that reloading it from the main screen is enough. I really hope I saved. Oh god, that would be terrible if I, if I had just accidentally quit without saving. Hashtag ADHD problems. This is this is where I was. Oh, oh, thank goodness the creepy old lady's still here. You, my good woman, are a landmark. All right, I'm going to take like a two minute break to get some water and make sure that my throat isn't dying because uh, that's what happens when you are post um, when you have post COVID syndrome. So I will be back in literally like two or three minutes. Just give me a minute to stretch and get the water. All right, I am back. Um, do let me know if uh, I opened the window because it turns out that even if you do block a sunbeam blasting straight into the back of your head with a large blanket on a panel framework you've set up so as to block the sunlight, that basically turns into a, a heat storage heater. It gets extremely hot and then blasts the heat directly into your back instead of via thermo, via sunlight radiation or whatever. Do you have anything else to say to me, or are you just... Well, look, you're clearly someone who knows what she wants out of life, and I respect that. Can I get through this? Something tells me that none of these will open it. 
I don't know what that image is, but it looks to me like um, Dr. Robotnik. Big moustache, big round glasses, dome bald head. I don't know what the chemical marriage of Christian Rosencrantz is, but it sounds rad as hell. Is oh, did I hear a monster? Or are we good? Are we good, old lady? Are we good? We're fine. Right. Okay, we've got pretty decent. Oh, hang on. Fuck off. There's. Did I forget the map? There's definitely a map of this area somewhere. So after this point, ah uh, here, ah uh ha, -huh, ah uh ha, -huh, here it is. Yep. Should disaster fall upon the village, seek out the crests. One is in the church, the other is at Louise's house. Okay, cool. That's I've already done that, but thanks. One of my favourite things about the Resident Evil series is their insistence that finding two objects is a puzzle. Um, it's always like, solve this puzzle to open the door, and then it's just like, there's a square hole and a round hole, and you go, okay, well I guess I put the round thing in the round hole and the square thing in the square hole. I don't know that I could have solved that without the... The assistance of the the hint system. Oh yeah, see that is Rad of Hell, but it, Rad as Hell, but it could easily have been the title of like an urban fantasy novel. Can I open this? Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking with ketchup. At least this is one step further as a puddle, a, a puzzle, I guess. <laughs> That looks oddly familiar. Now that's some classic Resident Evil bullshit. Although I do have... But blood and death. Huh? I do want to... How do I get that? I want that. I do have a, like a, a sneaking... Not a suspicion, but a hope, even though I know it won't happen, that it won't turn out to be like weird... Like, disease monsters, but but like straight up... Yeah, no, like, 600 years ago, Lady Dimitrescu got a demon in her, and so she's a she's she's a magic vampire, like. That was not worth three bullets. I really need to stop uh, throwing good bullets after bad. Yeah, like, I'd be so happy if it was just straight up, like... No, this one's like an actual magic wizard, like... Can I swim? Oh, I can swim. Ish. I could wade. Wading is like swimming for people who don't like to swim. Is that a wire? That looks like a wire. I wonder where that's going. It's tied to this. Maybe we get a boat later? This is this is so dark soldier. Except it's obviously kind of it's got the whole like baroque goth thing going on, so it's very uh bloodborne -y as well. Yeah, like like you say, it's uh, it's 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 Johnny Bloodborne. It's um, old gassy gas. Love a vaulted ceiling. Honestly, I could look at this all day. You know, everyone does talk about the jugs in this game. It seems like two thirds of the marketing material was just focused on you know, pairs of jugs. What is this? Apples and sp Brussels sprouts, I think? I want an apple. Can I- can I take an apple, please? Well, well. Didn't think anyone was left. Oh wait, this isn't the big it guy? Must be pretty tough. Huh. Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're not local. Oh, what the fuck? I love this. Mother Miranda's gonna love you. <laughs> Holy shit, it's fucking like telekinetic Van Helsing. This is great. He looks a hell of a lot like the big werewolf guy, so I assumed he was the same, but maybe they're not. I'm not sure now. This bit's from the trailer. Bet you're whining. We're almost there. 
Somehow this guy has a less real American accent, but is more American than all of the other characters in this European place who all have, um... I can't tell if you're... No oh. Use to anyone else. And my daughters do so well. Entertaining the worms. <laughs> Furthermore, I can show you you entrust the mortal to house in the dusk. My daughters and I will deliver to you the finest... Way, so I want to see! He's away! Mother, shut the fuck up! What? Where? You mean you'll screw around with him in private? Where's the fun in that? Give him to me, and I'll put on a show that everybody can enjoy. Ugh, so gauche. What do we care for bread and circuses? The oh, they're desynchronized again. Suffering is assured. Yak, yak, as a man's dick is cut off in the castle, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've heard all your arguments. Some of you were less persuasive than others, but I've made my decision. Heisenberg, the man's fate is in your hands. Mother Miranda, I must protest. Heisenberg is but a child, and his devotion to you is questionable. Give the mortal to me, and I will ensure he is ready. Shut your damn holes! And don't be a sore loser! Go find your food somewhere else. Quiet now, child! Adults are talking. I'm the child. You're the one who's arguing with Miranda's decision. You wouldn't know responsibility if it was welded oh, to Oh, keep glory. Hand. One day your head might actually fit your ego. Fight, 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 hey, fight, don't fight, I get a fight, say in this? <laughs> Silence! My decision is final. There will be no argument. Remember from whence you came. Thank you, mother. Ha! Lycans and gentlemen. We thank you for waiting. And now let the games begin! Oh man, this sucks so bad. Get ready. No way! Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one, showtime! Time to get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ! That's right. Run for your life. Did he give me a radio? Why can I hear him? Strong right leg on this guy. Very nice, Susan. <laughs> These are all really funny. Like, shout out to the chat because my goodness. You're still alive? <gasps> Classic! I was just like playing D&D when I was 10. Test the old right leg again. This guy really is very Leon. Oh, it continues all through here. Okay, can I kick these guys? <laughs> My word. You truly are a oh, I didn't go fast enough. <laughs> oh no, I stopped to smell the roses, by which I mean look at a fucked up werewolf guy. That was a mistake. Jesus Christ! That's right. Run for your life. Nope. Cool if I could do the uh, Corvo sprinting Very skid nice. kick. <laughs> no, no. 
thing about Ethan is that he's very good at parrying with his forearms. He redirects the force of the motion so as to not be fucking killed by it. You're still alive? Impressive. Impressive, and as soon as the ceiling comes down, you pressive too. Okay, let's not stop to have a conversation with a man in the prison cage. You truly are as strong as they say. Oh, you didn't think I'd let you smash this? Ooh. Gotta keep Donna and Moreau entertained. So now it's time for the beautiful. I, I don't see a way out of this one. <laughs> Nothing like fresh American growth? Fresh American ground beef? Amazing. I like this guy. Jesus Christ! Like, all of the technology in this setting is from, like, the 1920s, which is why these guys have... Instead of a nice, convenient, small-sized kitchen blender, a very large, spinny death machine. <laughs> this has strong uh, interactive movie vibes. It's not exactly. Uh... I think you just like cowboys, don't you? I love a good slither hole. Yeah, there probably is a niche to hide in, but um, I, I tried to break open that box instead, which is why I didn't have time to find it before it just blended me into a thin paste. You don't really think about werewolves as liking pâté. They're more of the like raw meat off the bone vibe kind of guys. Shit! <laughs> My word. You truly are as strong as they say. Oh, you didn't think I'd let you get away. Gotta keep Donna and Moreau entertained. So now it's time. That was not helpful. Blood soaked Is there a hole? <laughs> Nothing like fresh. Oh, you saw it. You saw the hole. Well, please tell me about the hole you saw and other things that I say on Saturday night. Jesus Christ! That's right. I feel like I should try and fight that guy instead. I'm sure I could take him. Very nice, <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. Can I skip this? Well, um, either you are correct and that is where we need to go, or you're wrong and I'll get blended again, which is what would happen anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. My left or, or their left? Oh, you didn't think I'd let you get away. Aha! Gotta keep Donna and Moreau You're a genius. So now it's time for the beautiful. This is gonna get uncomfortably close. <laughs> Nothing like fresh American ground beef! <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. I can, it's fine, I can fit through here. He's very skinny. For all that I said he didn't seem like a homosexual yeah, earlier, he does have twink have energy. Those. I keep saying homosexual, it's... For some reason that term comes naturally to my mouth way more easy than several others do. I do want to point out I'm a big queer myself, I'm not being a homophobic. Or at least, I don't think I am. Ah, oh, fuck off, not another one of these. So how long do I have before this sets off? That's what I want to know. This skeleton looks so cozy. He's just having a little nap. I bet he didn't even die of this. He was just like, you know what? I'm just going to curl up here and have a little nap. Skeleton. But hurrah for Boulder. Okay, these are inert. They're just, they're just here, I guess. 
These are all the same skeleton. They've only got one skeleton model, it's just copied. He looks like he's posing on the beach for a photo op. Ethan Twinkers, is that something? This is like in um in Portal when you get behind the behind the scenes and you see where they keep all the, all the test chamber apparatus when it's not in use. Oh, we're back where we started. What are the chances of that? If I've learned anything from video games, it's that any circuitous route through a building will always take you back to where you started. This has resulted in me getting incredibly lost in government institutions many times. You know, I do just... I could just look at these these bosses for ages. Look, these are delightful. It was a real smart moment in the history of um, medieval vaulting technology when they realized that you could actually double vault without a central pillar because the, the arches were strong enough just to hold it up. Um, this has been Self-Critical Automaton's Architectural History Fact of the Day. Love a big lever. Do, do, do. Actually, there is a lot of stuff that's been kind of dreamlike in this so far. First off, people seem to be able to do stuff that is outside the usual parameters of what uh, things can be done in the Resident Evil setting. But also stuff like the, the mismatch between the European and, and, and American voices and a lot of odd logic. And um, do I? I had my gun all along. You can... Just because my hands are manacled doesn't mean I can't use a gun, you know? Like, there's enough give there. I should have been able to... James, why can't you be more like Barry? Wait, I got that backwards. Barry, why can't you be more like James? Look at him. Not a single crow. That is a scarecrow who is doing his fucking job. This is a consumer professional. You? Look at you. You're fraternizing with the crows. This is the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. You are a scarecrow. Not to make friends with Crow and sit there while the Crow sits on your fucking head. You're getting promoted, you're getting fired if you don't fucking shape up. We only saw him Magneto when he was human mode. We didn't see him do Magneto bullshit when he was a uh, giant man. Where did the other Crow go? I shot it down. I want my Crow loot. Are you guys, like, dead, or are you...? I'm just gonna carve off a nice, a nice hank, a nice, uh, ham shank for later. I want my crude. Oh no, my crow landed inside the cutscene. Uh, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Winter. How do you know my name? Anyone who is anyone has heard of the likes of you. A hero searching for his daughter. Though I must say, that castle arouses suspicion. Yeah, and so do you. <laughs> I am but a humble merchant. Here? <laughs> I arouse many Here things, man. Ethan. Call me the Duke. Now to business. Weapons, ammunition, healing salves, Anything you desire, I can provide. Those are not tiny feet. What is wrong with you? Can I? Oh, I can move. I thought I was stuck for a second. It is honestly, I'm at genuinely, like, I'm not, like, super in, like, on the ball, very funny, making loads of jokes mode today. Horse, that one's alive. Horse, 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 horse. Um... Yeah, I'm not like super on the ball today, so it's kind of amusing. It's kind of frustrating for me that as soon as I see this guy, all I can think of is a fat phobic jokes, and I'm super fat. I don't like those. Those are bad jokes to make, and yet somehow I live in a society that has trained me to make make jokes about about weight, and that sucks. Oh, good. I was just thinking of ways to pass the time. I'll kill any horse I want, but not Please this one because do I don't take want a look to. At my new stock. As far as I know, crystal fragments are only for selling. I don't think they have any other use. Oh, the rest of these. <laughs> Would you like it to be yours? 
It's just occurred to me, I probably could have used that to kill the vamp uh, the werewolves in the field earlier. Ooh. Wow, this is worth 12,000 lei. I have no idea how much money that is. Oh, aha, so... Is one bullet? Is that one bullet or is that a pack of bullets? I think that's one bullet. One bullet is worth 15 lei to sell. I wonder how much it's worth to buy. Hard times, Ethan. Um, I can buy it. <laughs> it's not an attaché case this time. It's a big suitcase. Got a knife. Got a shotgun. It's a really blunt-looking knife. It's it's very much a fruit knife. It doesn't have the the appearance of a knife that is used to to kill people. It's it's a tin opening knife. It's a I've got an apple and I'm making some kind of rustic stew. I'm going to chunk it up with this kind of knife. Everyone knows that um, vampires are actually quite weak to landmines, traditionally. Yeah, like, it's just an absolute piece of shit knife. It's a complete garbage knife. Um, hair trigger for my shotgun. High capacity magazine for my handgun. I can't afford either of these. I... It feels wrong to buy bullets. How many do I get if I buy one? Does one bullet cost 150 lei? That's insane. What is it with with these guys taking advice, uh, taking advantage of me? Every Resident Evil protagonist with uh, like a, a trader shop gets just absolutely fucking gouged, first by the zombies and then by the merchant. You don't quite have the cash on hand. Oh, I can't afford to power it up. That sucks. It's only it's only a ten percent power increase. That's not great. Um, or. Oh. Two more bullets per magazine, or very slightly- these are very small upgrades. Hmm, I don't think I'm gonna get any- do you know what, I'm just gonna leave. Bye. Get some decent stock in your shop, dude. I will be taking my business elsewhere. I guess he has to gouge so fucking hard because it's like the only thing he has that's worth buying are bullets. Oh, this is the front door. I remember this from the uh, that portcullis came down very fast. I remember. Okay, so I remember this area from the uh, the demo. I will say one thing, which is that this Rococo wood carving and these this kind of like baroque gold gilt detailing everywhere is absolutely gorgeous and I absolutely love it. So naturally the first thing I'm going to do is start breaking shit. And honestly, it hurts me to, to smash these beautiful vases. I would, I would have this in my house. I mean, it's a limited clientele, sure, but have you considered that he could just take the stuff back off my corpse after I die? Three daughters, Bella, Cassandra, and Daniela. Two very traditional vampire names and one very untraditional vampire name. I like maybe Bella and Cassandra are like the ones who are properly living up to the family legacy, but Daniela is the like vampire equivalent of a goth. She's just given herself the most normal goddamn name anyway. She won't she won't wear the fancy gauzy gowns. She just dresses in jeans and a t shirt. She's like, No, Mom, I wanna be an accountant. Like, I don't wanna I don't wanna eat American tourists. I just you know, I just want to rebel against the family traditions. It is nice to see very um, a historically consistent art style for here in the inside. The outside of this castle is referred to as being high medieval. It's absolutely not. Some, a castle like this couldn't possibly date later than the late 1500s or the you know late 1600s even. Um, it is too large and too ornate. Um, but yeah, but the interior is very, very strongly like solid baroque, you know, Rococo. For all the uh, wallpaper does seem to be coming away at the seams. Can I peek through keyholes? Like in? No, I can't. This guy seems reasonable. They might have remodeled the interior, sure, but like, 
the interior looks like it dates to around the time I was saying that the castle almost certainly dates to. Um, like, this is, like, if they remodelled it, they remodelled it to look exactly like it should based on the time period of the outside of the castle. I'm just saying that the time period of the outside of the castle has been referred to as High Medieval, which it, it, it can't possibly be. Sounds like someone's having a gamer moment. I assume this was the front door in the devil. Mask the angel's blinded gaze and... Oh. I see someone spooky. Looking for Rose. <laughs> I think I'm getting slowdowns again. Yeah. Yep, okay, it's just kicked off. This is so busted. <laughs> if I cancel out of this now, will it let me load from before the cutscene? That's the real question. <laughs> this is a combination with the uh, the audio desync bug and with a. Um, the slowdowns from from the v VRAM. I should have reloaded, uh, probably outside the castle. Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, Doris. <laughs> now, let's take a look at him. Well, well, Ethan Winters. You escaped my little brother's evil games, did you? Let's see how special. All else aside, you would not believe how into this yes, I am. Mother, yes, like everyone's mad for the for the Lady Dimitrescu, but honestly, the daughters can get it as well. Hmm. Starting to go a little stale. Then let's devour his man flesh quickly, Mother. But I am the one who captured him. Now, now, daughters. First, I must inform Mother Miranda. But later, well, there will be enough for everyone. <laughs> what am I? I know, right? It's ridiculous. Okay, this is a problem I'm gonna have to solve. When I looked this up previously, it looked like there was no solution, and it's just some people's games just cursed with it. And it can't be fixed. <laughs> or, like, not by modding or whatever. Oh no! What are you doing? Oh no, fan self. <laughs> okay, wow, this audio is desynced by like a whole minute. This is insane. All else aside, her dress is so ugly. I really don't like it. Oh, I've always wanted a hat like that. You'd think he'd be an old hand at it by now, with the amount it happens to him. you got to hand it to him. He never does uh, give in to despair. I'm desperately trying to think of any other hand puns, but i got nothing. Like, knuckle, tendon... Uh, palms, maybe? Like, there's, there's nothing. He 
Ethan just hang dangling here like, Oh, this sucks. Oh, I hate this so bad. Oh, man. Oh, is everybody in Europe like this? Oh. So I'm going to reload it now and see if that helps. Yes, fantastic. Knuckle down is perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Because the only other option I can think of is fingering, and let's not go there. Uh, it should have autosaved right just there, based on my understanding of the way the game goes. Um, if it hasn't, and we watch that cutscene again, but not desynchronized, I'm fine with that. <coughs> so, I tell you what, I am actually going to tweak the graphics down and hope it's still fine. Um, where's the thing? See if that makes a difference. Because honestly, like, you're watching this on a stream, so it's going to look like ass anyway. Let's be real. Alright, time to check if that's worked. You all can see the game, right? If I go continue, that should work. Castle of Dumitresque, that's promising. Oh, okay, we're out here. So maybe we do get to watch the cutscene properly. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I don't want anything from you. Speedrun mode, Thank let's go. You for your don't be sarcastic. Oh, I should note down the time so that I can edit it so that the previous attempt maybe. Oh, uh, no, you, you guys were funny. Let's leave it in, I guess. Right, what did I need from here? Smash this, grab this. This is the real speedrun tag. I'm halfway tempted to learn to speedrun games just so that I can like catch up after I lose progress because I'm so bad at remembering to save most games I play. Three daughters, what does this say? Oh, I didn't read this previously, so it's good I did this. Rednick, delivery of one male, three females. Mother Miranda meeting with Mistress Dimitrescu. The Duke business discussions. It's weird that there's a guy called the Duke in a game with actual cowboys in it, that like, but he doesn't look like John Wayne. That's locked. This is a nice little... This would be a cool reading nook, actually. You could put a sofa in here and a little bookcase. It'd be really nice. Smash this. That smashed this on principle, just because fuck you people. Um, getting an American in your house, like, is kind of like... Vampire royalty is equivalent of getting like like a really aggressive raccoon stuck in your house, you know? Like it's oh there's there's like a bat flapping around, it's it's breaking all the silverware, it's like you know, knocking glasses off tables, it's awful. Quick, quick, catch it, get it out of the house, knock it with a broom. Let's see if this works this time. If it does if it's still bugged, I'm just gonna skip the cutscene. This looks better, it's not slow down. <laughs> so you mentioned cattle, <gasps> myth mythic cattle rustling, so it's astonishing that you haven't brought up, like, uh, uh, the Tanbo Kalanga, or um, any of the other great cattle raids of Irish history. Oh, yeah, see, the audio is... So the audio desynchronization bug is still taking place, but the VRAM slowdown issue is not occurring. So it's progressing at the correct speed, but the audio is desynchronized. Unlike last time when the animations uh, were progressing Mother, slowed down, but and the audio is desynchronized. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> ah, now, let's take a look at him. As I understand it, there are some cutscenes wow, that just have permanently desynchronized audio if you have you that bug happening. My little brother's idiot games, did you? Maybe reinstalling it would work. Let's I'll do that before the next session. Yes, mother. Yes, mother. <laughs> See, it's way less desynchronized because it's not also running at like 50% speed. You know what? This is less sexy Starting without the meaningful pauses due to the quickly, the slowdown bug. <laughs> now, now, daughters. First, I must inform Mother Miranda 
There's more of a moment of anticipation when the uh, there's these abrupt slowdowns as she leans in to suck your quote blood unquote. <laughs> Some of the audio is desynchronized and some isn't. The speech is desynchronized, but the environmental audio is correct. I think the environmental audio must be tied to the cutscene animation, and the speech audio is just an audio file that plays at the same time. That is what I think is happening here, so I think that's why the physical sound effects are correct and the other ones aren't. On the bright side, it still looks fine to me. I have no idea how it looks to you people. Can you tell me, like, if it looks bad or good or what? Because this looks amazing to me, even though I just turned the graphics down. You know, we can hang around for a minute. <laughs> you know, like, I wasn't sure if I'd like this game, but then I played the demo, and you know what? Ever since then, I've been hooked. Yeah, I know, right? It's a really good goth look. Straight up, I would wear that. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that's the that's the first bit that's kind of wigged me out so far. Ooh, 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 I don't like that. There's something wrong with this man, I swear to God. He's got the pain resilience of a rhinoceros. What is that stuff? It... Well, hmm, actually, this place has, like, 1920s energy. Has he just been... He's definitely used healing juice a, a couple times today already. Is he just pouring laudanum directly into his open wounds? Is that why he has such a high pain resistance? Because he's fucking stoned out of his gourd. <sighs> Plot hole solved. I have the answer. That's definitely what, the, what it is. But, uh, yeah, I don't know about this slowdown bug. I was going to make a joke about how if more people subscribe to my Patreon, maybe I can afford a new graphics card eventually, but that if, like, straight up the, the audio, that would help with the slowdowns, but the audio bug is just a bug that cannot be avoided, as far as I can tell. All opium hands. I mean, you're talking about glue, but, like, he's straight up they stapled his left hand back on in the previous game, and that worked. So, like, I'm not necessarily going to take um, being able to, like, glue a hand back on as some kind of supernatural ability, because, honestly, they stapled it back on and it was fine. And that was when he was crawling around in the Louisiana Bayou. Like, it's not the most hygienic environment is what I'm getting at. They use green herbs in this one as well. We do have some. Uh, we've picked up a couple, as you can see. I don't think there's any use for them other than making healing juice, so... Oh, and I have tons of this as well. I know I know what I should have bought from the fat man out front. I should have bought the shotgun shells recipe, because I only have two shotgun shells and I have plenty of uh, handgun bullets. Lady Dimitrescu has been here. I do like... There's something oddly sensual about these, like, discarded high femme components, you know? There's something so excessively posed about Lady Dimitrescu. Very kind of, um... I don't know, like, performatively physical. Physically performative? Maybe, maybe his hands are just prosthetic, like... I do just, I kind of want to wander around and soak up the gorgeous ambiance, you know? One of the things I do think is curious about this is that they keep hinting at a kind of a systemic game that I keep waiting to happen. Yeah, the fruit bowl's all fucked up, like... But, you know, what if you like fruit and you become a vampire? Vampires traditionally can't eat non-blood food, right? They just have to eat blood. So just putting blood on things to make it palatable to you seems like it makes sense to me. Can I smash that as well? Do I want to waste a... No, that's not. I might need it. 
I did want to crawl into her bed, but I can't. Look, see, I can't climb up there. The closest I get to a jump button is block. Oh no, absolutely. If this were up to me, I would be in that bed, like, arms behind my head, legs out, like, hello darling, as she comes back in, and then she would be like, no, that's my line, you don't quite understand which of us is the, which, which of us is which in this power dynamic. I will say one thing about Ethan Winters, as I say the 15th thing I've said about Ethan Winters. He does love to crawl through holes. This is a this is the other bit of the demo I've seen. So after this, I have no idea what happens in this entire rest of this game. Shoes, a lot of shoes lying around. Oh, it's some kind of a fucked up accoutrement. So, like a lot of Resi games, you can examine items, but key items can be interacted with, and if you if you get lucky, you can find secret things within them. Like the, uh, or things that you're entirely supposed to find, like this, for example. So, man, what the fuck was I going to say? I can't remember, it doesn't matter. Is that the door? That must lead back into the room I was just in. Nice. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, this game keeps gesturing about uh, having systemic death, depth and having some like openness of gameplay. Whenever I pick up a, a key item like the uh, the screwdriver, for example, I think, oh, okay, that's a tool that I will use in many different locations to achieve many different goals as I go through this game. And it just isn't. So far, this game is a really good interactive movie with fun combat segments in between. Where have they taken Rose? I mean, you say that, but I think they've definitely earned their end at this point. They've earned their demise. Like, I could give you the whole potted history of the of the conflict between Ethan and Ceramics, but... But, you know, I'm not just going to give it to you on a plate. I think this icon must mean that the, that the, the, the trader guy is here, because... It shows up in other places. We meet again. Duke, why are you here? Where there's coin to be made. <clears throat> and have you found your daughter? No. If she is truly here, the lady of the castle would have kept little Rose in her private chambers. Would she not? Yeah, well, I've just been in there. The very same. Why don't you take a look? Maybe you'll get lucky. And speaking of looking, care to make a purchase? He looks like he he looks like he exists only within the context of puppet theater. He looks like a man who has never seen a television. Oh, a typewriter. That's good. This looks interesting, if incredibly fucked up. Can I put this in there? You can't use that here. What do, will you take photos of beloved family members? Also, no. Norstein's Labyrinths. A craftsman in the late 19th century, Norstein was branded a heretic in his homeland. He wandered the lands until he settled in a remote village. Norstein then created four labyrinths, the castle, the house on the hill, the water wheel, and the iron tower. Upon completion, he put a gun to his temple and took his own life. You can't use that here. Each labyrinth is unique and requires its own specially crafted metal ball to operate. Each one contains crystallized human remains, which are said to be Norstein's four beloved wives. The labyrinths are their graves. You can't use that here. Nice, I'm glad I've achieved that at least once today. So, if I find a small metal ball, I can put it in here and try and... <gasps> it's Screwball Scramble! Does anyone remember Screwball Scramble? I loved that as a kid so fucking much. I'm going to splash it up here in the edit. Like, holy shit, Scruble Scramble is the best goddamn thing in the world. Julia, you know what it is. I've shown you so many fucking times what Scruble Scramble is. I can't believe they could put Scruble Scramble in this game. 
Although they made it weird and fucked up because it's Resident Evil and that's what they do. Yeah, I know they made a sequel. I'm so happy. I'm so delighted. Um, like, I'm gonna get back to you in a- You're right. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Oh my god. That is the most charming animation I've seen in this entire game so far. His, um, his, his ash dripped on his tummy and it burnt him. That, that is such a human- Okay, so, like, I talk about the way that they use animation and stuff to uh, humanize characters in games whenever I'm talking about the, like, the puppetry of gaming, which is, like, the puppetry of game design, the, the ability of a game designer to, to make something seem alive and human, despite the fact it's very patently not, and we all know it isn't because of the Uncanny Valley and all this stuff. That is delightful, and that is the kind of thing people never do. They never have odd little environmental mistakes. Humans do that all the time. They fuck up little small things, and it lends so much humanity to them. It is such a clever trick, and it makes him way more of a person than any of the other people we've seen so far. Right, I'm going to save, and then I'm going to reload real quick. Oh, we did it again. <laughs> uh, yep, that's where we are. I think I do need to close the game completely in order to get the bug to not happen, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'll do that the next time I save. See, I thought at first that I thought the, the, in the second it happened that he was startled by me like being over here and then popping out around the corner. Is he scratching his ass? Bro, were you scratching your butt with your? Did you stub that out on your Okay, I don't like him anymore. As you wish. Right, I should be able to get some upgrades now. Two crystal fragments and one crimson glass, which I don't believe has any secrets to reveal. And by it I will. I don't like this guy as much as I like the uh the I gunsmith merchant from for you, Mr. Winters from uh, Resi 4, but again, having a again, there's this weird mirroring with Resident Evil 4 as compared to Resident Evil 1 and the reflection of, like, Resi 7 and Resi 8. It's so strange that there is this recurring merchant individual with a personality and stuff who seems to just be here, I guess? Like, I'm gonna get- I'm gonna get this so that I can make Thank some. You for your purchase. Uh, let's see if I can get any upgrades. 8,000 light. I definitely want to put power on my pistol because I have so many bullets. Um, I'm not having a problem with rate of fire so far. You know you can just make pockets. You can just add them to clothes you have. Once you get the recipe from the trader. Uh, I can't afford anything else. Let's move on. Good day then. You're weird. You are, you are a strange man, but I respect you. Oh, hang on, is that the slowdown? Am I getting the slowdowns? I'm not sure. Uh, I shouldn't be, because I didn't... I really didn't reload it that long ago. Oh, is this just... Oh, this is just back to Dimitrask's room. Where Rose very definitely isn't. I mean, if you go back to traditional depictions of like vampires and so on, there is this um, there is a different definite trend of them them being cannibals, and I think that the European vampire comes from a more from a tradition of cannibal monsters rather than from blood drinkers, and that like the cannibalism sort of mutated like mythologically into blood drinking over time. And, like, the idea of eating babies is a very kind of, like, traditional European vampire thing to do. Oh yeah, I forgot you have a cannibalism fetish, Jules. This is nice. I. Another thing I want to say about this is that this is exceptionally well observed. Ooh, interesting. Environmental storytelling. Signs of a struggle. Teacup. Well, I mean, look, okay, like, it's not a surprise to learn that there is blood in a teacup, but having the, the lipstick on the edge be the hint that there's blood in the bottom is a nice touch. Oh, I was going to make 
shotgun ammunition. Ooh, oh, it takes chem fluid as well, okay. I'm gonna leave the rest of that for now. I can always, unlike the previous game, time pauses when you go into your inventory, so you can, like, take the time to make more ammunition in combat, which is incredibly unrealistic, but I don't care. I think only the gold ones have stuff in, but um, I'm just wrecking these guys shit on general principle at this stage. Anyway, uh, what I was saying was that like this is really well observed. Like There are many preserved stately homes in the world that you can visit, and you know, the ones from the correct time period do look like this. You can visit ho like palaces from the 1700s that look like this, that are still excellently preserved like this today. And I think a lot of research must have been done into those spaces because of the way that this space reflects them so very accurately and very pleasingly to my eye. I see anything? That looks like a big statue. Resident Evil does have a, uh, a good stock in trade with giant statues that do weird things. Although, very few of them live up to the enormous marble and steel automaton that is a statue of the dwarf ruler of the palace in uh, Resident Evil 4, because the other thing about this reboot is that while it is reflecting the earlier series in some interesting ways and doing some interesting things with that, the campness is gone, and I think that's a shame. It's it's so strange to me that you would reboot Resident Evil but throw away the camp. Even if you get even if you step aside from the like techno futurist weirdness, those games are so camp. They're incredibly silly and goofy and incredibly self serious in a way that is very very endearing, and I think is a sh huge shame that we've lost. Special bottle adorned with flowers. Presumably, I'll find one of those and put it in here later. Right. There we go. The winemaking techniques of Castle Dimitrescu can be traced as far back as the 15th century, long before the current occupants of the castle. So that implies that the castle is, you know, older than the 15th century. Which, straight up, that is not true... Well, I mean, it might be true within the game world, within the setting, but straight up, this, this architectural style is later than the 15th century. There is no way this castle is from then. Um... Alcina Dimitrescu uses this legendary yet peculiar technique to enrich the wine's flavour intensity and bestow it with a thick bouquet. Her best vintage is Sanguis Virginis, meaning maiden's blood. It is kept in a special ornate bottle decorated with intricate silver flowers. That seems super normal, like... Like, name a European noble family that hasn't been involved in the wine trade. I don't know what people are up in arms about. This place seems, like, normal to me. Like, like look at it. This is just a well-preserved historical building. I don't see why everyone is so fucked up over this this nice woman and her and her, and her friendly daughters. Like... So, over here we have one, two, three, four. I'm going to guess that there's four crests I need to find. Definitely not. Bro, was that you? Or is there somewhere else around here? I'm gonna assume that was you and it's fine. Alright, uh, I'm gonna save and reboot the game because thanks to the demo I know that there is a, um, a cutscene in a second. Which, uh, did I save? Yeah, I did. So, I'm getting nice and fast at this, at least. But, um... Yeah, after that sequence, I think the next save point after that, I'll probably call it a night. After I get this thing working again. And then, yeah, it seems like these problems aren't going to be soluble. Um, my, my rig just is not good enough to run this game without these weird slowdowns building up over time. Which is a shame. Um, I could try turning the graphics down even further, but I don't really believe it'll make much of a difference.
And then, yeah, then it'll be like Thursday for the next one. I think that's what I planned. Right then. I'll see you later. Uh, you've grown on me a bit. And he's... No, that's not. I look through there. Yeah, that's where Dimitrescu's chambers are. I'm surprised she doesn't have a chamber higher in the building, really. Seems like it would be, like, high up for the person in charge. Right. Um, as always, the, you know... Very difficult puzzles in Resident Evil games. You, you definitely got to f use object on object's obvious location. I wish this lady would just buzz off. She's really starting to bug me. I haven't cut open a man in a while. Let me string you up, slice your jugular, and just walk. Taken a live, dead witch, would you prefer? I can't hold back any longer. I can try and fight her, but it's basically just a waste of ammunition at this point. Yeah, he basically doesn't act like his hands are wounded in any way. So this is like a hunter section. Oh, I'll read this in a second. I, no, I'll talk about the hunter's stuff in a second. June 9th, 1958. It was my first day working at the castle today. I was most shocked to see these other staff were all women. The mistress and her daughters were very adamant that they wouldn't bite. It was quite peculiar. Yeah, I bet it was. June 23rd. It's been two weeks since I started working at the castle and I'm a little afraid. Another maid, Adela, made a mistake and Miss Daniela slashed her face with a knife. And at night I can hear wailing as if ghosts roam the halls. I want to go home. July 8th. I don't know what to do. The young ladies were complaining it was too hot and stuffy during dinner, so I opened the window just a crack. Shut it, shut it now. They all shrieked at me in unison. I fear I may be taken down to the cellar, never to be seen again. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Presumably that's hinting that that note has been here since the 50s and that this room hasn't been touched since then, but that is very definitely not sufficiently rotten of an orange. You know, like, I've seen a banana and an orange left for a while and they have... If it's been f 60 years since those were left here, they, there would be nothing left. There would just be slime in that, pa in that plate. Is there a silver bottle with silver flowers on it? Nope. I guess maybe the orange could be a vampire too. Although to become a vampire traditionally, you need to like... Oh shit, you're right! His hand did grow back! What the fuck? Yeah, you're right. When the when the when the fly flew out of his huh? Hmm. Strokes goatee. Hmm. 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 That is very curious. I wonder if that is an oversight by the by the art team, or if he did just straight up grow his hand back. Oh, hey. Uh. Well, I mean, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you walk away. Can I? Look, his fingers are gone again. Oh, someone just messaged me on Steam. I thought I switched that off. That was adorable. That was my little brother sending me a message to say that he really en really enjoys Homestuck. Only about 12 years too late. Oh, the right hand? Was his right hand not... Oh, from the hook. Okay, right, sorry. I misunderstood you. Uh, I'm done, but that's fine. It's a good thing I'm pretty and also good at interpreting narratives in a way that people find endearing on the internet. Uh, oh, that's odd. My chat has disappeared off of my peripheral device, so if people are saying things on there, I can't see it. I mean, I am dumb, but in a good way. Like, in, in a fun, reclaimed way. Like, I can't do maths, for example. Now, this, this is delightful. This is beautiful. Um, the thing that I really appreciate about this is that it is a very... 
No shit, really? The important thing here is who left this message? Um, because this is not exactly a difficult puzzle. It's weird that I sort of have to slam my face into this rather than pushing it with my physical hands. It's kind of an oversight, really, but, um... Maybe, also, but maybe, this, maybe they intend you to shoot it instead, but whatever. But this bar relief is beautiful. I really like it. It's heavily inspired by several genu genuine historical bar reliefs that have been found, you know, in the world. I can't say for sure where, but um, there are definitely historical examples of ones with a couple of soldiers at the front leaning out. Nowhere near this level of detail, but where there are these like stone uh, spears and swords poking out from the front. Seeing one split and curved around the walls of a room like this is just a really beautiful piece of art. Ethan cares not for headbutting. Well, 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 here we have the traditional vampire murder basement. I feel like this game is trying to get me to be upset and fucked up. Even when I was playing this for the first time in the demo, it was just nothing. Like, I don't know why this isn't scary to me. Um, I do have one idea that I'll talk about in a minute, but... Like... Fear comes from the unknown, right? Like, you're supposed to be scared of things that are strange and different and that don't make sense and that you can't comprehend or fit into your, your logic. Um... Which makes sense that this isn't very... Oh, that's gross. Someone needs to empty the toilet. Which, like... This is normal, this is expected. There is no European castle um, inhabited by vampires in the entirety of Europe that does not have a creepy murder basement. However, this does lend credence to my like alchemy theory, my idea about like, oh, maybe some guy 600 years ago was doing the kind of experiments Umbrella were doing a decade ago um, with much more crude technology. And that's why vampires are a thing. Gordon Ramsay going through it being like, you've completely undercooked the human liver. This is terrible. You're a fucking donkey. That's not his accent. God, I can't even remember what he sounds like. It's been so long since I actually saw him rather than gifts of him. Irina, robust appetite. Mihaela, robust appetite. Lois, robust appetite. Ingrid, unstable, overly alert at times. Yeah, this is, this is very alchemy-y. Look at this. Well, that says alco alcohol... Arthralic? Ar alcohol acrylic? I'm not sure what that says. So I guess this would be kind of later then, because it's not talking about like Aqua Regis or whatever. Oh, Grody. It's hollow. There's nothing on the inside. <gasps> this is. This is a theme park! I- this is fine. I got- this is just a, one of those cool European theme parks where- where it's like a roleplay theme park, you know? So it's completely themed around whatever the story is. It's like- like an escape room but big and then there's people who are employed to be like vampires chasing you. It's real! You can look it up. Those are- those are- those are things that exist. These are all styrofoam. These are- these are styrofoam corpses. That's paint, not blood. That's an actor. This is a this is an airsoft gun. <laughs> nice. Oh guys, come on. I'm not going to bother to stand and fight all of these guys because there's so many of them. And there's only one of me. I'm only, I'm, you know, I'm only little. Ah, fuck off. Yeah, again, this is very, this is very Dark Souls. They don't seem to be bothered by the sunlight, though. Which is unusual for vampire thralls, which is what I'm going to assume these are. Although they're not chasing me up here, it looks like. I could probably go back and pick him off for a bit of free lay. Nice. 
They can take a lot of headshots, these guys. Was she outside in the sun? I think we mostly saw her underground. Oh, I made him drop his thing, but he did not actually kill it. I thought he was dead when he dropped his thing. Oh, a crystal skull. Okay, so I'm going to guess that in these combat sections, if you kill enough guys... Oh, hey, look, they turned into dust. That's appropriate for vampires. So I'm going to guess that if you kill enough in one of these combat sections, you get a crystal skull that's worth a whole bunch. Oh, no, that wasn't her in the field murdering a guy. That was um, that was the puppeteer one, I think. Um, or possibly the Mother Miranda overarching figure. Hey, look, it's another, um, another Robotnik door. I guess that means that maybe I'll be coming back through these places later. Yeah, yeah, see, it was Miranda. I can't believe Cassandra caused all this mess. So you can shoot her, but because she's made of bugs, it doesn't really it doesn't really bug her. Um, so instead, uh, I'm going to do... Well, I mean, you can make her become dissolute, I think, if you hit her enough, which lets you get through. But you don't think you can meaningfully hurt her. I need one of those big zappy lanterns. A healthy man's blood. Mm. I can't wait. Lady, you have some weird messed up gender politics going on. Where are you going, little one? She's so pretty. <laughs> Bullets cannot harm the vampire. <laughs> You stupid man thing! Okay, so now she's vulnerable. I feel no pain. That doesn't mean you're not vulnerable. This can't be! Not like this. I'm quiet because I'm focusing, but... How many head Oh, she's down. She's done though. She's out. Ooh, okay. There might be a whole crystal out of crystal thing to make. That's cool. But yeah, she was clearly vulnerable to sunlight and the thralls downstairs won't, weren't. Honestly, if someone wanted to... Uh, like, low-key, like, if someone wants to have this kind of BDSM scenario with me, I would be potentially... Maybe let's not discuss these things on stream. Let's move on. Um, so, yeah. We're donezo with what I assume is the first proper boss fight. And this brings me to something that I have trailed off and not talked about, despite wanting to talk about it the whole way through this stream. Namely, um, that there is a, a modern style of... Um, by the way, after this point, I have seen 0% of this game. I have no idea anything that happens after this point. This is the end of the demo, so... All of the rest of this is going to be new to me. Oh, here, it's the secret bottle. We sure are answering questions at kind of a very high-speed rate. It is also hilarious to me that the generic you've picked up an item noise is the same generic Resident Evil noise they have the whole way through. So you pick up a, a handful of bullets and it's like... Or, well, okay, it didn't show me that, but that's fine too. Another one was sent to the cellar. She had only spilled some soup. Everyone knows what happens when you're sent to the cellar. You're never seen again. They drain your blood, your soul cursed to wander the halls. I went looking for her, and when I found her, she was just skin and bones and gnawing on a rat carcass. I suspect I'll be next. So yeah, back to this point that I keep trailing off from. There is very much a... Um, a tradition of survival horror, and then a new subtype of survival horror started a few years back with... Um, it kicked off with the Amnesia games. Uh, I think they were genuinely the first of the of the you-are-being-hunted subgenre of survival horror games. But really, um, it, was, it was kind of mastered and codified in um, Alien Isolation, which is a very, very good game and one I have thought about streaming as well. A recoil compensator, very nice. I'll happily equip some custom parts. Uh, 
Well, yeah, that's true. They did make Penumbra first. Um, Penumbra was kind of like the first experiment with that, but it was very short. Um, and it was less about being hunted and more about kind of getting through a space with, you know... It was sort of about being hunted, but the, the amount of actual, like, hunting that happened was, was, was pretty low. Um, and Alien Isolation was the first one of these that had a genuinely incredibly skillful AI that was very well developed to... Wooden Angel statue. Uh, that was very well developed to actually hunt you intelligently in the environment. It was the first one of these games that didn't feel like there was a weird, big weird obstacle that moved around in its own right that you had to avoid, but that actually um you are actually being hunted um and definitely that was a huge influence specifically alien isolation was a huge influence on um resident evil 7 because resident evil 7 mostly got rid of the killable monsters and instead had Different areas of the game have one or another large individual foe that you couldn't really fight. You could maybe knock them away, but not straight up kill them. Um, or, you know, you could push them away or force them away, but not actually do anything to get rid of them. Um, in the game. So each area had its one kind of big hunter that would, that would seek you. And that absolutely unambiguously must have been an influence on Resident Evil 7. Because... I mean, uh, Alien Isolation having that mechanic and then it being adopted into Resident Evil 7 in that way, it's a direct influence. So because of that, there is this kind of mechanical complexity to that game where it does have this vibe that seems like you are going to... Is this what they do with the angel statuette? Oh, apparently not. Oh, I know what to do with the wine. I put it, go put it in the place, but I will save first. Thanks to your consistent patronage, I've expanded my services. Really? That was quick. I, I've bought things from you literally one time, dude. So, um, I think at the very least so far in this game, I don't know how long this game is, so I don't know how much of a weakness this will continue to be, but it gestures at having that kind of systemic depth where you can gain tools and then you can use them in various places to do different things in different ways at different times or whatever. And, um, like, I love games that have that kind of systemic depth. That's why I play so many immersive sims. I love being presented with an, a believable, realistic environment that I can then explore in a really, like, sensible way and that reacts to my behavior in a realistic way. What I don't like about this is that it gestures at that with what seem to be reoccurring tools that you then only use once and these sequences of set pieces. As an interactive movie style game, I really enjoy this. I think this is a really fun game. I'm having a lot of fun with it, but I do find it disappointing every time it seems to be saying, now go explore this wide environment and see what there is to see and, and, and solve puzzles. And actually what it's saying is progress to the next set piece. It's almost kind of quantic dreamy in that way, rather than a kind of a actually explorational. Anyway, um, all that aside, let's Welcome, see what he's got. Ethan. How does he know my name? Oh, well, the Crystal Skull's only worth 900. Ah, okay, so the daughter herself dropped this. I really hope none of these are important later, because I'm definitely selling them. Dissatisfied? I believe this is a fair price. I believe this is a fair price. Um, is that better than just upgrading the ammo capacity? I suppose it must be. He said he upgraded his services, but this seems the same to me. Um, it would be most of my money if Security I get the hair trigger. Is more important than anything. Anything, my friend. I mean, having this money means nothing if I don't do anything with it, so... Let's upgrade the shotgun, because that's really slow to reload. These hands are more dexterous than one might think. <laughs> Bro, are you threatening me? Is he saying he's going to throw hands at me? I love the crunchy noise as you as you attach gun mods. It's really good. Uh, how many of these do I have? I'm just gonna get one just in case. Have a wonderful adventure. Yeah, if you lie to me about having upgraded your inventory again, I will pop you like a balloon. So I'm gonna save again, and I think I'm gonna call it a night. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. 
Yeah, no, you're right. He's definitely... He, he is definitely into Ethan. I think you're completely correct. Anyway, um, so yeah, that is going to be all from me for today. Come back on Thursday if you want to see the next chunk of this adventure as we get increasingly fucked up. Next time, I will have no idea what to expect, no idea what's coming, no idea what's going to happen. So, hey, um, if you want to see me be confused by things that happen in a Resident Evil game, Thursday, same time, same place. Um, if any of you aren't already fans of my YouTube channel, go check it out because it's really good and you might like my content. Um, remember, you can follow, you also, if you're able to and you feel like it, you can donate to me on Patreon to ma help maintain my existence. That is completely optional. All of my streams and YouTube videos will still be made and happen anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, that is all. Goodbye.